Oh, sorry, I didn't notice you there. Uh, it's your pal Al here once again with another uh, Al's Geek Lab. And today I'm going to be showing you how to clean a floppy disk drive head. Now, it doesn't matter whether you've got a three and a half inch or a five and a quarter inch. All you need to know is that you need to ask your girlfriend if you can borrow some cotton tips and also a bottle of isopropyl alcohol. Those two things, you're sorted. Let's get on with it. Before I get going with taking the crust from your circumference, I should show you a few of the things that you can also be aware of. First things first, you don't have to use alcohol, although alcohol is good. You can use a disc cleaner, disc cleaner thing, there. Um, and what this consists of, at least for a five and a quarter inch, is an empty disc. And then you get a pack of cleaning wipes. Um, but those things, rubbish. Um, another thing you want to be aware of is that maybe you have a floppy disk controller card. Again, on the older machines. If you want to clean the contacts on the controller card, which I highly recommend that you do before you get started because if you're having any issues with your floppy disk drive, it could be the controller card. So there's a few things you can do to clean the contacts on it. These, these are the contacts here, by the way. Yep. Uh, there's a few things you can do. Uh, you can just use the usual alcohol. Um, also, I do recommend that you go for a contact cleaner as well. These things are um, pretty expensive though, so if you don't have them kicking around or, or you don't want to invest the money, just use alcohol. But uh, this is Deoxit, and uh, I think it was about 20 bucks or something, maybe 25 bucks. Had it for ages, though it lasts a long time. Looks like um, something that uh, your girlfriend might put on her nails, but trust me, if you put it on her nails, you could get in trouble. Okay, so anyway, this stuff, um, yeah, it's a few bucks. Uh, you can put it on. It's got a little dab kit and <clears throat> all that good stuff. Or you can just use good old alcohol, which is here. Mmm, alcohol. Poison. Okay, right. So once you've cleaned that up, it's time to get the floppy disk drive out. We'll do that. So here's a floppy disk drive. Now, this one... I'm doing it on the oldest floppy disk drive I could possibly find because that one is probably going to be the hardest to fix. Look at the size of them. I mean, it looks like something off the Death Star. Anyway, uh, again, it's got some contacts on it, so I'm going to give those a little clean with my super duper deoxit. Um, I've got to take off this printed circuit board here. So I can get in at the head, which is underneath there. The good thing about these disk drives, because they're so blooming big, is that you'll be able to see exactly what the head looks like. Whereas on the little three and a half inch ones, the beansy, beansy little heads. Okay, right. Well, oh yeah, one other thing that's important is to note that if you're having troubles with your floppy disk drive, disk drive, um, you might also note that it has a travelator, or I don't know what the problem, proper word of it is. I just called it a travelator just because I could. This little rubber band down at the bottom is like a drive belt. If you ever owned a turntable back in the 1970s, then you will recall that sometimes that little band went, um, went a bit stretchy. So make sure this band hasn't worn away. Um, or is nearing the end of its life, it could fray if, it, uh, if it's looking a bit, if it's not very tense then again, you might want to get that repaired or replaced probably replaced. Okay, let's dive into it. Okay, now I've taken this bit off printed circuit board 
I've cleaned all the contacts on both sides. I have now got the floppy disk drive. It's so heavy. Um, I've got the floppy drive exposed. And uh, I'm going to give you a little demo of how they work because it's ridiculously simple. Now, if you remember tape uh, cassettes from the 80s and possibly the 90s, then it f basically works on the same principle, right? This here, floppy disk. Floppy disk goes like so. Right, so the floppy disk's in there now. And if I close the lid on the floppy disk, watch, I'll show you what happens. So are we all watching carefully? Watch this bit here. Now it's tight. The head's tight. The rotator, I'm going to call it a rotator, is tight. So what it's doing here is when it's all powered up and it's whirring around the disk, this little rotator thingy spins around and around. And that just means that down here, the little magnetic bit at the end, this bit, put that down, hold on, this bit here, that's where all the data is read from because that's where the head is. So put those back in. And what you can see here, so this is turning, 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 all the time turning, and then this bit goes up and it goes down, up, down. Enough, the head goes up and down. And basically, uh, whilst it's doing that, it's reading ones and zeros off the magnetic strip. Just as when the tape cassette, when it passes over the tape head in the tape player, cassette player, it's doing the same, except it's not going up and down, it's just passing over it. Right, so simple. So, that's, uh, so whilst it's rotating, if it's slow, the reason it's slow is because it's seeking up and down whilst it's whirring along. So, yeah. Now, the floppy disks, the three and a half inch ones, work in exactly the same principle. When you put it in, there's a little latch on the metal flippy bit. I don't know what it's called. It's a flippy bit. So when you put it in the disk drive, the flippy bit opens up and you can see the exposed disk as well. So exactly the same principle, just smaller. And that, that can also make it a little bit harder to clean the heads in a three and a half inch drive. But that's it, pretty straightforward. Let's get down to cleaning. So what I've done is I've de the inside of the floppy disk because there's all gross stuff there everywhere. There was like hairs and I'm not talking like hair from my head because I don't have any. They were big long hairs. No idea. Anyway, um, I've got my little Q-tip here and I'm looking here. At, this is the head assembly and the heads themselves are just down here. You can see there's one at the bottom. don't know if you can make that out but I'll try and rotate it a little bit. You might be able to see inside there. Just in here. Maybe I'll get this one. Let's get this little pokey thing. Really difficult to see. You just have to take my word for it, I guess. It's in there. So there's an upper and a lower. Thanks, airplane. There's an upper and a lower head. So obviously it's a double-sided disc that this disc drive accepts, so obviously it reads both sides. The one on the bottom is a lot bigger than the one on the top. But what you need to do is get one of your Q-tips and put some isopropyl alcohol on there. And then what to do is just give it a little pinch with your finger. Hopefully your fingers are clean. And that flattens it out nice and it also stops any of those little hairy bits from getting on, so nice flattened out. And then you just want to go in there and be really careful that you don't touch the upper head when you're touching the lower head, and that's why you want to squeeze it. Just, and then just dab it there, as quick. It's easier to actually come around from the, the side. Just dab it 
and then do the same for the upper head just dab that too and hopefully you should see some dirt or something come off excellent and that's pretty much it that's how you clean a floppy disk drive the last thing I'm going to mention is the process traveler um, because one of the reasons why it might also have problems is because the lubrication of the head itself might be a problem. So I'm going to use this deoxit again, but you can use whatever you like. You can use some, um, I don't know, sunflower oil if you really wanted to. Don't do that. Don't. That's a bad idea. Anyway, uh, I'm just going to put some of this on the process traveler. And you can see it's lubing up the head quite nicely. Mm -hmm. It's quite therapeutic this. Try not to get any on the head itself, just the traveller. Now I'll just wheel the traveller forward and back and I'll take it back uh, to its front position as well. I'll just loop the back as well. This has got the added benefit of being a contact cleaner. I don't suppose that really matters here, but just getting it nice and lubricated will not help. It won't, won't, won't be a problem. Okay. WD-40, also pretty good. I um, <clears throat> don't know if you can hear, but when you click, when you move it right back, there's a little click. There's a micro switch just down at the bottom there, which tells it it's um, at sector zero, right at the beginning of the disc. It's probably wise just to stick it back to the beginning of the disc drive, just so it knows it's ready to go. Okay, I think that's about it. I'm going to pop the printed circuit board back on. I'm going to tidy up all this, and I'm going to try and format a disc and see if it, if it works right because before I was having no luck formatting a disc uh, I don't know it's probably down to the dirty head so let's uh, let's just um, let's just hope it all works problem solved it was crusty head and nobody wants crusty heads in their life so it's fixed that's all I have to say really well that's about it for another Owls Geek Lab hope you enjoyed the video if you've got any questions or comments, please hit me up in the comments bit below. Um, obviously, I love your comments. I always get, I always end up guffawing over them. Well, some of them. Uh, please subscribe. It does make a difference to me. It really does. I love to see the numbers going up. And I also press that notifications button to let you know when the latest videos come out. That's all from me. Have a great day and I'll see you soon.